Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome for everybody that's joining us today for the Cybersecurity Sales Masterclass. My name is Juan Fernandez. I am the Global Channel Chief of Hackware, and I'm really excited to have each and every one of you join us today. Now, this is round two, so we did have the first one, which had a bunch of fun and, and technical difficulties. We were able to record it, but we definitely felt like there was so many, uh, so much outpouring of love, so many people requesting it that we felt like we wanted to do this again. And for you, you ask, we answer. <clears throat> we're here and tis the season. So happy holidays to everybody. We're going to do this one more time for you all out there. So for all of you that are joining us today, I'm excited to have you here. And so I want to just kind of just start the conversation and, and, and just, you know, let you guys know for everyone that's joining us, this is going to be an interactive session. We're going to be doing these every couple of weeks. And our intent is to have you engage with us, to ask questions, to really, you know, get involved on really having an open and honest conversation about ways we can improve our business, ways that we can talk with our customers. And together, we can help each other really raise that bar and, and, and help each other learn from our experiences and also share those. So I'm happy to be able to do that with us here today. And we're going to be talking about that. So as we got the slideshow going over here, my uh, trusty assistant on the back end is going to help us to present that. So we're going to be talking about this cybersecurity sales masterclass. <clears throat> One of the questions that I often get asked is you know one you know it's really challenging to have a conversation with a customer not only just about managed services but positioning value is is one of the, the key components and then and now that we're starting to look at this new evolution of cybersecurity and bringing awareness to our customers it's really important for us to be able to bridge that gap and have you know very open and honest conversations with you know the modern customer and so what we're going to do today is we're going to dive into that so we have uh, a table of contents here of things we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about an important thing, which is our role. What's our role in this in this you know conversation? What's our role in cybersecurity education, and what do we got to be doing with our customers? And we're going to be talking about some assumptions. A very interesting conversation that we'll be diving into there, and I'm going to be uh, engaging with you guys so we can be, be having a conversation about that. Some questions to be asking our customers. I often get you know. Uh, People ask me, what are some of the top questions that I can ask my customers to really open up? And we're going to be discovering some of those today. And then along with that, we're going to be talking about some talk tracks. We're going to be having a conversation about starting the conversation. Like, where do I even start? What are some of the meaningful ways I can do that? And one of the things that's near and dear to my heart, which is knowing the no. We'll dive into that. I know that sounds a little bit interesting for those that you've never heard me say it before. We're going to go deeper into some talk tracks, and then we're also going to talk about some steps to success that you guys can, you know, really uh, actively uh, have conversations with your customers and, and a real meaningful way to move forward. So as we dive into this, I want to make sure that we do one thing, and that's definitely starting at the beginning. And I think that we have to start at the beginning on purpose, because in order for us, I know that cybersecurity has just come to the doorstep of us and it's been around for a long time, but now it's really a conversation we need to start happening with our customers. We need to go back a little bit. And in order for us to go back, I want us to go back to a point where in time where you've heard a conversation, a jack of all trades is a master of none. Now, I know all of us have likely heard that, but today we're gonna to embark on a journey towards becoming a master of some. And that's what this whole master class is about, is really understanding everything that goes into having this conversation. And so hopefully I, I look for some feedback. You know, if you've got some good things that you're doing and some things that uh, are working in your practice, you know, I definitely want to learn more about what it is you're doing and definitely ways we can help each other share. And, you know, I'll be sharing as well. But I think the conversation starts with us. And, and I, you know, for many times, you know, in the history of man, you know, knowledge has been passed on to the generations, one to the next, to the next, to the next, right? And and one of the things that I often love to ask this question is how many people know how to get on the internet? You know, show a raise of hands, right? You do we know how to get on? We don't. And I think that a lot of that came from the fact that the internet and the and the technology that we have today 
came upon us really quickly, right? It exploded over time. Like many of you that are here today have built businesses around the explosion of technology and our, our ability to rapidly adopt it and then transact, you know, turn it around and transact it to customers in a meaningful way. Cybersecurity is complicated, right? But in order for us to get started, it doesn't have to be hard, right? It doesn't have to be complicated to get started. But I think the biggest role that we have to play here today is understanding that we are educators. Right. It is our job to teach those that are around us or our customers about the implications, the operations, the, you know, the integrations of it. And so now that we have kind of a baseline understanding of where we're at in technology today, it's easier that we've been doing this for a while to ask a lot of questions. And so today we're going to be we're going to be doing some stuff. But in order for us to have a lot of fun today, what I want us to do is I want us to engage and we're going to be doing some competitions. We did this on the last one. So for those of you who heard the last time, you can't win again. But for those of you here for the first time, you can win, right? And so today's questions, we're going to be asking some questions. And we're going to be publishing the chat. So the chat's going to go live. So know that you guys are coming in here live. You guys, as you guys are posting stuff, you're, you're going to be on here live. I can't do multiple things, which, you know, I love to say I can multitask, but I can't, you know, do the chat and all the other stuff that's going on at the same time. So we're going to turn your chat live. Everyone's going to be able to talk. I want to see what today's best question is. And those that have the best question, we're going to publish those and share them with the world because we want to hear your voice and we want to understand those problems and we want to be able to put those out there and answer those while we're here and then also share with our friends. Uh, today's best comment in the chat will win. Today's best question is going to win a prize. Today's most active engagement will get one of our pre-release t-shirts. I uh, can't tell you what that is yet because they're pre-released. Uh, and then five lucky people are going to win an MSP owner's handbook. And that is uh, something that's near and dear to my heart as well. So do me a favor. Make sure that you guys are commenting. Make sure that everything that uh, you want to ask is, is is there. And put it out there so that we can share with each other. So let's get started a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and comment in the chat. So for all of you that are out there, tell us where you're from. You know, let's have a conversation. And I, the first question that I want to ask for everyone that's here with us today is, how many of you think your customers know about cybersecurity? You know, what does this look like? You know, what 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 are your uh, what are your thoughts? How many of you guys think your customers know about cybersecurity? And one of the things that you know I want to say here is that. You know, when we're, we're talking with our customers, you know, we're asking questions, we're wanting to get to know them more, we're wanting to really have a conversation with them. You know, oftentimes what we'll do is, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about tech, you know, and we'll be talking about our process or our procedure. We'll be talking about things that uh, maybe, you know, have nothing to do with their business. You know, maybe it doesn't have anything to do about cybersecurity, maybe it has a lot to do about tech. So I'm curious for those of you that are out there and for those of you that are asking or answering questions over here, um, what are your thoughts? And the reason I ask this question is because, you know, it's like, yes, Juan, I'm sure that my customers know about cybersecurity. Yes, I'm sure uh, they do or don't have some sort of idea. You know, one of the things that I want to say is that when we're having these conversations with our customers, and we're asking these questions, you know, it's important for us to really think about the questions that we want to ask. And the reason that we want to do that is because if we ask questions that we don't know answers to, we may get responses that we're not ready for. And we want to be really careful by making inferences and thinking that our customers know about cybersecurity. Now, there's a, a comment that says, yeah, they may know about the theory, but they don't know about the tech. You're right. They may have an idea. They may be getting these resources. They may be hearing about it from the news, which we all are. We all live in the same world, right? We are hearing about all these opportunities, but do I really understand? Do I know what cybersecurity is? Do I even understand the full breadth of what that might mean? This is why you want to be careful about assuming, because oftentimes when we assume, we can go past it right away. It's like, oh, you know, so do you know about cybersecurity? And they're like, yeah, well, I know about it. And it's like, okay, cool. So then, you know, you need the firewall and you need to have, you know, you, we go into this solve mode. And we have to be very careful here 
um, when we assume that the customer knows about the product or the program or something along the lines that has to do with one of the words that maybe we say, we can put ourselves in a place that they didn't really understand the full gamut of what that meant. So that when we're trying to explain to them the technical aspects of what it is we're trying to do for their business, it may may it may move right past them, and they're like, "Oh, well, they don't really, they don't really understand how much I really know about that." And since I don't know, I'm just going to say, "I don't really know what you're talking about either," because I haven't gotten there. You know, I think uh, one of the big things here, it says, I don't think my customers want to know the details. I think they just want to know they're safe. You're right. You're absolutely right. And I think that it's 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 appropriate that when you mention that, you know, when you talk about that, that we have those conversations around what does cybersecurity truly mean? Like to get to the point where I can ensure you're safe. And I like where you're going because I love the outcome of being safe. That's a meaningful one. We'll talk a little bit about outcomes here in a minute, but I just wanted to make sure that when we're asking these questions, we don't jump too quick because I know we can get excited. I was once one of those people that did the same thing. And it's like, oh, you like technology? Well, let me tell you, ABCDEFGHIJKLMNOP. And it was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And it's like, okay, well, congratulations, Juan. Have a good day. It's good meeting you. Uh, don't even know exactly what the heck you just said, but thanks. You know, and it took me a long time to figure that out, but it's very important for us to understand that conversation. So I would say one of the best things that I can give and some of the advice that we'll go through this today and a lot of the resources that you see here uh, for those of you that are, uh, you know, wanting to get these resources, there will be an opportunity. Every one of you will make sure that you get these. We have some great resources prepared and I promise you, uh, you don't have to screenshot the screen. We will provide this deck to you as well. And the recording also with all the resources that you're going to be seeing. So I got that from the last one where everybody was like, hey, man, uh, I was trying to get all those resources. And I'm like, don't worry, we're going to provide those for you. Um, so one, some of the basic questions, you know, obviously we got this new type of customer. We have to keep it simple, right? We, the conversations that we want to have are similar to this background that I have behind me. Right. I, I have this on purpose because my intention is to have a seat at the table when I'm talking with my customers or when I'm talking with any customer or when I was an MSP or anything. You want to keep it conversational. Right. We want to keep the questions basic. You know, how are you adopting work from home? What we need to do is get our customers talking about the level of education that they have around cybersecurity. The big thing that we want to do here is we wanna ask simple questions that lead to answers that we have. I see this happen oftentimes where MSPs will ask questions of customers that they have no real answer to. And I don't mean that you don't have an answer technically. I mean, maybe you don't have a process for the success of the answer of that question. You might have a technical resolution, but maybe it's not a process for the solution of that problem in its entirety. And I say that to say this because Oftentimes when we ask questions and I, you know, we ask questions that we're not quite sure of the answer, right? It's like, okay, well, what are you guys doing for security? Well, that's such an open-ended question, right? And then we base it off of, we'll, we'll inject some realities based on what they're about to say. You want to make those questions a little bit more significant to you. Now we're going to hand out a resource that will give you some of the framework to help you better understand what that means. But like, you know, some of your top three security concerns. I want to know if what you're concerned about and what's interesting in your business is something that I can help you with, like my solution, my stack, my offering. It's really important to make sure that you have an appropriate uh, relationship here and that you can provide some sort of a meaningful outcome for them. Similar to what they said a moment ago, where we had uh, the comment uh, that they want to know that they're safe. And I love that. Right. I think that's super important for us. But the goal in this conversation, ask questions with your customer here is to get them talking. I re we really need to see their take on cybersecurity, gauge on how much work it's going to take them to, you know, take the steps towards success. Because that's ultimately our goal. Right. We want to make sure that they're super successful with our program because we want them to tell their friends about it. It's like I had the most amazing experience with these guys or these gals. It's really, really, really important for us to focus on that goal. 
And I think that the goal that we need to make sure that we're focusing on is not just making sure that we understand them, but it's also understanding that I need to make you comfortable with the biggest challenge, which is change, right? Because customers oftentimes don't want to change anything. That's the, the first no you're going to get is like, you know, if I tell you that, you know, you need a firewall and you need some security policies and procedures and we need to go and do all this ABCDFG, one, you just told me I needed to change everything in my company and you gave me a, a cost associated with that. So it's going to cost me money and it's going to cause disruption or I'm going to have to change something that's different than what I'm doing today. Now, whether I'm, I may need that, right? I may need to change. I may need to do that. But do I feel comfortable enough with you that you have a plan for my success to manage that change? That's the biggest challenge that we'll face at any table, at any deal. So I hear this a lot where MSPs are like, Juan, you know, they needed it. They absolutely, I knew that like they had so much pain, like everything was wrong. Like the whole infrastructure was like falling down and they still said no to me. Why? And I'm like, well, let's ask the questions like what, what 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 questions did we ask? You know, what program did we put in front of them for their success? Did we give them one? And they're like, no, I just told them what they needed. And I'm like, OK, so let me give you this scenario. Whenever we go to the doctor and the doctor, you come in and you say, you know, you know, maybe you have some pain in your leg. And the first doctor you talk to and they say, well, you know what, Juan? We think you're going to need to take that leg off. Your eyes are like, excuse me? Uh, what? Yeah, and you might be, you know, you may not fully recover, but, you know, you're going to need at some point. You may as well just take the leg off. Okay, that sounds a little dire. Um, or, you know, I'm like, so most likely I'm going to go and get a second opinion, <laughs> right? So you go get a second opinion and the second one says, you know what? Hey, you know, it looks like there might be somewhat of a fracture in there, you know, A, B, C, D, F, G. I'm going to go ahead and then prescribe that we put you in a cast, some sort of treatment, and we're going to, you know, do this thing over the next year. Okay. Or I go get a third opinion and they sit down and ask me a bunch of questions and they're like, you know what? It sounds like you just need some, you know, some physical therapy. Maybe you need a massage. You know, it sounds like you might have a pinched nerve. And so when you think about those, like all three of those are prescriptive advices, but some of them asked questions, some of them didn't, some of them just jumped into solve mode, and some of them made some really radical uh, assessments on like, you know, because I've seen this before and it's ultimately going to land up this way. Right. So when you think about those three different ways of doing things, right, it's really important to understand that. Sometimes, even though that may happen, there's a bunch of different ways people can do them. And when it causes some sort of impact on life, business, employees, customers, the most change is going to be a difficult one. I'm willing to make the change if you have a plan and I feel like I'm comfortable with you in that change. And this is where you have to think about that in, in, in our line of business as well. I know every one of you's had somebody come back and say, no, that's just too much. Too much what? Too much money? Too much complexity? Too much what? And it's pretty much probably too much change. Like, I don't think I can handle that. And I don't see us meaning figuring out a way to do that without creating a major disruption to my business. And so I think that, you know, when we have the conversation and we start having the conversation um, back to education of the customer, right? I want to pivot here for just a second because I think it's important. Uh, yep, yep. Got a good comment coming in here. Yep. Customers don't want to change, right? It's the fear of change. When we're having conversations with our customers, it's important for us to make them feel comfortable. And it doesn't just start at the table. It doesn't start the moment that I have a conversation with them. Um, it starts at the beginning, right? You know, there's a lot of things that we can do from the beginning that have to come into play that make customers feel really, really, really willing to do business with us. 
you know, let's say that, you know, in the dire case that we have some sort of an event that happened and a ransomware event or some sort of malware or something's happened in this customer's environment where they're down, this may not ultimately qualify for that particular incident. Um, but in the case that we're long term educating customers on those that we're trying to make, uh, you know, make a move to the future of their business. Some of the ways that you can do that by starting the conversation is, you know, at sending them some resources in the beginning, doing some webinars uh, that are customer facing about, you know, ways that they can improve their business through cybersecurity or ways they can protect their business. And I see a lot of MSPs doing this right now. So kudos to those that you are doing this because together we can help the world move forward together, you know, with this knowledge. Again, back to the part where we're educators, right? The easiest way to win a deal with a customer is to make them feel comfortable that you understand what's important to them, their business, their whole delivery, you know, operation, the way they do things in their business and that they feel comfortable that you have a plan for them. One of the best things I used to do with my customers was when I walked in was, here's our six steps to success. This is the exact way that you can, you can effectively imagine yourself. So in the case that I have a diet plan, let's just say for those of you here that have ever been on a diet plan or looked at a diet plan or talked to anyone about a diet plan, there's something that you wanted out of that, right? And it was ultimately to lose weight. So you did research on that thing. And if you felt like it was going to work for you, you tried it. Now, if you're like me, you've tried a bunch, not any of them really stick. And it's probably because it's not the change. It's just like, I really like that piece of cake at the grocery store, man. I'm just gonna be honest. Like I love snacks. <laughs> so, you know, but the thing is, is it's the education around why I want to be healthy. That helps me make the decision. Cause in the back of my mind, I know I need to do it. Right. So I go eventually look for that operation or that, that plan. And this is where I think we come into play, right? You know, you add in these resources, these webinars, and you're sending out drip campaigns on email communications. You know, whether as situations are coming out, you know, if you're alerting people that either you know or don't know or you're looking to do business with about it, and they're like, man, this company's really on it. I really like them. You know, I really like what they're doing over there. I might entertain a conversation with them even more than I would if they just came in my door randomly. So let's see here. James says, I think it helps to educate the customer and prospects by using marketing other approaches before asking them to make a change. I like where he's going here. James is on. I like you, man. I like where you're saying. Uh, Tommy, definitely we'll make sure that you get that. We're going to put that out there, bro. We'll get you a copy of the slide deck for sure. But I'm curious, for those of you that are here with us, what are some of the ways that you guys are doing? It sounds like James is already doing some uh, some proactive education components. And I'm curious, you know, and, and James, if you're willing to share, you know, are, do you see a lot of traction from people approaching you, if you wouldn't mind commenting in the chat? And again, for those of you that are joining us, you know, I'm also curious, what are some of the ways that you're doing it? I mean, resources, webinars, emails, those are great. Uh, I have seen some really creative stuff um, where people are doing like local get togethers. You know, I used to have an absolute amazing time doing chamber events where we would come and teach about cybersecurity to local small businesses. And it was never, it was, it was always a shock to see how many people were just aghast with what they weren't doing. Right. They're like, Oh my God, I didn't even know that existed. Um, it's funny. Cause I'll drop words like netiquette. I don't know if you guys have uh, ever heard the word netiquette, but like, you know, there's like a whole etiquette to doing business on the internet. Right. Again, I mentioned that earlier, how many of us know how to get on the internet? <laughs> It's one of those things. And I encourage you to ask your customers because that's like a super fun question to ask. Uh, there's no real right answer. Like there's no like dummies guide for getting on the internet, right? Maybe there is. I have to look that up. Maybe there is. But here's the thing, right? As we move forward, ultimately, regardless of what you do, we're going to get some things called no's. And I'm sorry, I wish that I could tell you that there's a way around that. But here's the best part about that is we can work and engineer a way around no's. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, I know. Netiquette is great, isn't it? Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts here. What are the common objections that you get in 
positioning cybersecurity services with your customers. Post that in the chat. I'd like to get some of your feedback here for everyone that's here today. It sounds like we've got a lot of, of great professionals here that have a lot of experience. And even for those of you that are just coming in, I'd love to get that because here's what we're going to do. On the second version of this coming up in a couple of weeks, uh, we're going to go into some of these no's that we get from the chat and from the, everyone else. If you guys see this at the bottom, uh, if you email over hello at hackware.com some of your no's that you get if you don't feel comfortable posting in the chat by all means do me a favor i'm going to take those and we're going to break those no's apart like if somebody's came to you and said hey you know what i don't like you i don't like your pricing i don't want to do any of that stuff um yep james too expensive from a break fix to monthly i see you um we're going to take those and we're going to crack those apart. We're going to go into like a deep dive of like, here's what the customer's saying. Here's how they're feeling. And here's some of the ways, like here's two or three or four techniques that we can actually break that no apart. And this is something we're going to continue to do on our master classes. So every time you give us stuff, we're going to go and tear those things apart and explode that view and kind of dive into them. So take this conversation as like a pre-sales no conversation, a pre-sales cybersecurity conversation with some no's. Because the next one's going to be a little bit more intense, and I intend to do that on purpose. Um, yeah, it's never a priority until it's a problem. You're right. Uh, and that's 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 a great one, right? So let me share with you a few no's that uh, I want to cover today. And it's, you know, the easy one. I don't have money for cybersecurity, right? And, you know, I, it won't happen to me. Our favorite, right? We, I think we've all heard that one. We've already have protection in place that covers us uh, and it's adequate. You know, that's a, that's a pretty big one. I, I've heard that often. No one is interested in my data. I'll wait until my insurance requires us to do something. Uh, we've been in business for years and we've never had a problem. <laughs> I love that one. Uh, I don't see the reason I need to pay more since you take care of everything. How many of you guys have heard that one? guys and gals like that that's a that one hits close to home right and uh again i, I love these ones that are in the chat over here I, we're definitely going to break these apart here's the thing that's near and dear to my heart right I, I think that all of us here are 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 either technical or we come from a technical background we have some technical knowledge inside of me i'm always thinking of ways to engineer things and one of the things that i learned a long time ago was the psychology of understanding why people either bought or didn't buy you know i started off in break fix and i realized real quickly that you know the race to zero was a zero it was not a business model right it's a zero sum game and like that's not a way to run business so giving away the product if it may be that and i'm doing it for less than you know uh, very thin margins that's really difficult right so like i had to learn how to tell myself no about doing things like that. And so I was like, okay, well, if I have to tell myself no, because I have to run a business, like how do I get these people to buy, right? And it was interesting because I had to look back to a time when I was young. And I remember sitting out in front of a grocery store and I remember watching people get out of their cars and they would start approaching me depending on the weather or the time of day or the time of week, or if it was a weekend or if it was a payday, like it was all these people, they would get out of their car and they would come and I would know whether or not I was gonna sell them a paper. Because I used to be a paper boy. And I could make an assumption whether or not this person, just based on the way they were moving their body language and their eye contact, whether they're willing to make it or not, and how quickly they were moving to the front of the store, whether they were going to buy. And I got pretty good at watching that. And I could pretty much tell. And I would just wish them well if I knew they were coming. And I would just kind of jolly them along if I would. And I'd be like, you know what? I wonder if I could turn that person's persona around. I'll catch them on the way back out of that store. But let me say something nice to them now to help them because I can see that they might be dealing with something. Now, I wanted to impact their day. And oftentimes when they came back out, they're like, hey, man, that was really nice of you. I want to say thank you. So you know what? Let me get one of those papers. You know, now it wasn't about understanding the person or their problem. It was really identifying the body language around it. And I think that there's a lot of inflection points and we have to be very careful about what we're doing when we're having these conversations because we can give off body language that tells them a story too, right? And so understanding the no is super important 
because you want to know what no you're going to get. Now, these questions are here on purpose, and I'm going to take the questions that you're giving us. And I want to break those down because in order for us to understand how to get the yes, we have to under, first understand the no's that we're going to get. I often used to train this with my MSP saying to the salespeople, if you brought a no with, if you came out with a no, it's probably because you brought it with you. And they would be like, wow, really, dude, that's ruthless. Like, why would you say something like that? I'm like, I'm not trying to be rude. It's just that we didn't see the no that we got. We need to understand more of the no's that we're going to get so that we can understand how to make our offering more of a yes program. So we would go through some exercises to understand what questions we needed to ask to get the outputs that we wanted so that we could deliver a program with the least amount of friction to our customer. So when we talk about these no's, there's a reason behind that. I want to explode that a little bit because when we look at that, you know, as you engineer your questions for the yeses that you want, it's important that you understand you ask the questions that you want answers to. And so we put together an amazing resource called Customer Talk Tracks for a Modern MSP. Now, this is a very condensed version. It's a full-blown book. Uh, our illustrious team on the back end, uh, Rachel, and especially our, our, our marketing uh, person now here, Britta, she has done an amazing job of putting together this wonderful resource. You guys are all going to get access to this resource. It's probably something that we've spent countless hours on to prepare for you. But it has questions like this, and then it also gives you inflection points of conversation responses, why you'd want to be asking these questions, what your customers likely will say back to you, and then stats and deliverables so that you can open up that conversation to keep it going. It, you know, the question that we don't need to ask here is whether or not cybersecurity is a concern to your world, right? Now, I at, told you to ask that that's on purpose, but we already know the answer to these questions. A lot of the answers to these questions we know answers to. Our point is we want to get these customers comfortable with us so that they know that we understand their pain. Back to the analogy earlier, I know what hurts. It's okay. We all have the same pain. Now it's a matter of which one hurts the most and which one do we need to solve for you quickest, right? We want to solidify the seat at the table with our customer. We want to make sure that they we know that we understand them. So some of these Customer talk tracks, uh, you know, what cybersecurity threats and concerns you the most? You, are your, is your information and your business priorities aligned? Do we know where our data is and how it's protected? Are your employees being appropriately trained on cybersecurity? Uh, do you know how to respond to a cybersecurity incident or emergency? Do you know, do your documented policies match what's actually happening in your practice? Now, I probably don't need to tell you all these. But there's a lot of great information behind why we would want to ask these questions. And as you start to think about this, again, remember, this is the Cybersecurity Sales Masterclass. Most of you here are prior advanced or maybe even super advanced. Maybe you're already rolling best practices at 110%. But for those of you that are just starting, this is for you. This is specific to help you have those conversations for those of you that are just starting out. So, And for those of you that are advanced, this is probably a good refresher course. You know, I'd love to get some feedback on this resource. When you guys get access to it, you know, shoot me a message and let me know. Uh, Juan, some of those were dead on. You know, here's what I would have changed. Again, remember, we're trying to help the entire community of MSPs here. We're open to suggestions and we would love for you to help us out. Uh, this is where we all come together as a community to help each other, right? So that being said, we are attempting to pivot the conversation to a business conversation. Now, I don't have a really cool background back here of server racks anymore. That used to be me. I used to have a picture of server racks because I was talking to technical people, you know, and I was talking tech talk. Now I have a business background because I'm trying to have business conversations. I'm trying to sit at the board table. I'm trying to sit with the customers and have a meaningful conversation with them about their business priorities. It's really interesting for us. And again, uh, I think someone said it er earlier, it's never a priority until it's a problem. The problem's now. It's happening as we speak. We are living the problem. We are right in the midst of the problem. And guess what? Lucky for us, we're the problem solvers. So when we're having these business conversations, now it's just a matter of making them understand that it's not just them. A lot of customers want to feel like they are... Um, unique. And I love to say this, you are. 
but none of them are technically snowflakes even though they like to make decisions that make them very specific to themselves their buying habits their decisions all of those things make them very special and different but that doesn't necessarily mean it changes the conversation to say that everybody needs technology and cybersecurity it's just it's a, they're they're it's peanut butter and jelly right it goes together that's just how it is now i know somebody may come back and say "Juan, well, i don't really like peanut butter or i don't like jelly but that's okay for the most part it's peanut butter and jelly right and so when we start having these conversations it's interesting to have business conversations i know oftentimes you know we can use fear tactics to encourage customers to make decisions i would caution you against doing that um anytime you make somebody feel anxious or apprehensive um, it, it's, it's a danger zone. You want to be very careful of making them fearful of anything you're saying or doing. It's not encouraging for them to feel like, man, this guy made me feel like uncomfortable. Like I, I it's, it felt like a pressure cell. Like you're trying to push me into something. It's like, I already have the problem. I already have a hurt leg. It's not like I don't have a hurt leg. I just need you to help me figure out how to fix it. And I don't need you to tell me that it could fall off one day. Like that has no consequence of right now. Like I'm trying to figure out how to get it fixed right now. What can you do to help me with that pain so I can continue to live my life long term? Let's come up with a plan. But for right now, what do I need to do? And so as you have these conversations, I would suggest you study your customer that you're going into. Remember, you don't want to come out with a no. So you go in knowing that you're going to possibly get a no, right? So you do that by doing research on that customer. Understand the type of customer that they are, understand the type of, of company that they are, any security or compliance reg regulations that they might have. And then what are some of the common things that are associated with that specific type of company? Like what are their biggest pain points industry-wide? I mean, we have the access to the internet. We should utilize those tools to come up with a meaningful conversation to have with them. Don't take the same talk track in that you took to that last customer like that hurts like, you know, and I doing the same thing over and over is the definition of insanity, right? So if it's not working, let's iterate around the ways that we can make it work. And I love the fact, yes, you got to know your customer, right? We have to have the conversation. We have to know what's important to them. Like, where is it? that I can help you the most before I even walk in the door. So really important for you to understand some of that. Now, this some of these stats that we have, when the questions that we ask, we actually stitched in a whole bunch of stats that are very relevant, 2023, none of this old stuff, um, from very reputable sources so that you could have meaningful conversations for when they respond, you can affirm and say, you know what, you know, in your particular uh, type of company, you know, insufficient security measures are common. So don't feel like you're alone. 45% of companies, you know, state that their processes are ineffective at mitigating attacks. And that's the rest of the, that's the whole world, right? Like this isn't, this isn't specifically you. Everyone has this problem. So don't feel like it's just you. It's just, what are we going to do about it? That's your choice, right? That's your choice today is what we're going to do about that moving forward. So you want to make them feel really comfortable about the type of change that we're going to make here. And so when we think about the business conversations that we're having, you know, and we're having these conversations, we came up with a little bit of a, uh, a framework for top discussions. So you're going to get this. You'll be able to take this. You know, one of the things is, you know, what's the reason behind it? You know, give us a reason. You can go in and fill this in later. Um, when you're asking your customers these questions, you know, what's the reason that they're concerned about cybersecurity? What's the top five issues? You know, do they have security concerns? You know, what, what, you know, what is their thought around the money or the impact of their business? And are they aware of their social responsibility? It's really important to understand, even if you take this in as a little playbook for that particular customer and you're, remember, we want to ask questions, even though we may give them a little bit of context, you know, you could use this a little bit of a framing here, like, Here's the reason that cybersecurity is important to you, right? Or, you know, here's the top five things that are important to that customer. Here's how security really impacts that particular customer. Here's the things that are important to them. Like use this as a little, you know, little index card or transversely use it as a questionnaire, 
where you can ask your customers some of these questions. It's really important, whatever you do with this, that you actually use some sort of benchmarking so that you understand the questions that you're asking so that you can know where this either won or lost, right? Does this really resonate with this type of customer? And if it is, then like, okay, let's let's chalk that up to the green level here and say, I want to keep that. Or if it's red and it's like, oh, I got a horrible response from that. That didn't lead anywhere. Let's not ask that again, right? And this is where I think it's really fun. I think you guys can have a lot of fun with this. But our intent is to basically give you the opportunity to have a process for pre-sale success. You know, here's step one through five. And the number one of them is, is define your strategy to ensure your contracts, your sales materials support your offering. Now, this is for those that are just starting out. So for some of you that are advanced, you may not like this may be something you've already done. But for many MSPs, they're looking for advice. So remember, this is number one of the sales master class. We'll continue to do these. And as we do, we get more and more advanced. Uh, but we're starting at the beginning here. So defining that strategy is super important. And I don't mean just saying I sell managed security services. It's being ready to sell, right? Make sure your contracts are ready. Make sure you're, you're Make sure that you have uh, your sales materials and your marketing materials are ready, that you have those resources we talked about earlier. And then prepare your emails so that they're relevant for cybersecurity and begin sending them out to your customers each week, possibly each month. Make sure, because remember, we heard earlier a couple others in the chat that are doing cybersecurity are educating their customers before they go talk to them about it. It's a, it's, it's a lot softer of a conversation if I've been educating you over time on why you need this. Number three, this is super fun uh, for those of you that are extroverts uh, and some of you that are introverts that want to become extroverts. Uh, is launching a customer-facing lunch and learn, doing webinars, have a series to educate your customers on why they should or shouldn't do that. This is something that took me a long time to do as an MSP. I will be honest with you. I was really focused on building a business. And by the time when we did this, I created a whole show called Making IT Simple. And that show was a uh, two part. It was number one was to take that to our customer base. And then number two, it was to also educate our internal team. So when we were doing these for our customers, it became not only a webinar series, uh, email education series, but it also became a road show where we actually went around from city to city and we did these road shows and provided nothing but end user education. And I can tell you that it was probably one of the most impactful things that I ever did as an MSP for my customers. Uh, because, you know, a lot of them would invite their friends and they're like, oh my God, you got to come to this thing. Like, you're going to get a lot out of this. You may get a little scared too, because like you, there's a lot of things that we didn't know that we're doing. And it was really fun. And so for those of you that are looking for that and you're getting ready to launch your cybersecurity practice, be thinking about those types of things. Uh, and step four, I think this is one of the biggest ones, right? Is uh, take your time. I know that's not normally a step, but I want you to stop for a second and, and take your time. Not everyone's going to come running, remembering, you know, come running to your offering. You have to remember that you have to gain trust over time. Uh, it takes a while to build out that trust. So don't get frustrated if you don't close right away. Just keep doing it because over time, they'll become educated. They'll become, they'll, they'll feel comfortable with you. And then they'll ask, you know, hey, it's, I think it's time for us to make a change. And I'm sure, I promise you, if you guys that have been doing this for a little while in this similar scenario, you've heard this. I think it's time we made a change. We understand that we have a big enough problem now that we aren't doing things we should be doing. And then number five, I think this is probably one of the most important things, is once you have a customer ready to make a commit to you, make sure you execute and hold yourself accountable to your mutual success. So many times, I used to say this, and I say this all the time, you win and lose at onboarding. And whenever you're bringing a customer in, if what you said during your sales process doesn't mirror exactly what's happening during your onboarding, that's a pretty big, uh, pretty big situation. And they can tell right away and you can win a lot and you can lose a lot there. So for those of you that are looking for strategy, this isn't technically an MSP strategy class, 
But if you are looking for strategies around how to do some of that stuff, you know, I was a proud, I have the opportunity to be one of the proud co-authors of the MSB Owner's Handbook. And inside of the MSB Owner's Handbook, there are strategic resources for QBR processes and a lot of the good information to get you kind of to a point where you can start really building out a practice. So if you hop over to the MSPHandbook.com, um, you can download the free resources. There's a QBR resource on the resource page. It's 100% free. Um, if you do land up, the book is on Amazon. You guys can go and grab that too. It's a good read. Um, and it's really one of the things that helped me build my business to a point where I could really start delivering on a routine basis. And again, remember, customers want to hear about a plan. So when you're talking about how you're going to enact this change, they want to know that I have a plan that's going to help me to success. I want to see myself lose weight is what they're saying, right? I want to see myself walking because my leg is better, right? How do I get this business to go from, oh my God, I have a huge problem to this was the best thing I ever did, right? That's where you want to land up. And I know that you, if you're like anything like me, we're all about customer success. We want to see people be um, happy with everything that we do. And so this is the way that you can do that. So this is a meaningful resource. Um, one of the other things too that I want to point out is that uh, you also will have access uh, for those of you that uh, are looking to get this uh, after the after our webinar today, we're going to be delivering the customer talk tracks uh, that we'll be sending out by email. For those of you, uh, there is a link that will be posted in the chat. We'll also be posting on LinkedIn for those of you that want this resource. So if you didn't get a chance to attend the webinar and weren't able to look at the chat, we're going to go ahead and post that. Uh, we'll also have a very cool resource. It's called the Hack Assessment. Now, this is new. Uh, the reason that we built the hack assessment was so that you could go into a customer's environment and you could actually send this hack assessment to the executive team or to the employees, and it will give you back a score based on some of these questions, whether or not the employees are aware of some of the security policies, postures, procedures, protocols, uh, technologies that the company's using, which will give you back a score, which you could use whenever you're doing your findings and recommendations, uh, chat with your customer and saying, look, not only do you, we have a problem because you realize that there's a problem, but also this hack assessment now tells me that 65% of the organization doesn't know about our policies and procedures or doesn't believe we have any. So there's an opportunity for us that we need to educate as we're making changes, we need to be educating the employees, our internal customers about these changes. So that's a really cool one. You guys are gonna wanna pick that up. Also, the slide deck's coming out to you guys. We spent some time on this. If you got any tips or tricks, you want to see anything different or you think there could be some cool changes here, I'm open. So please do me a favor. Hello at hackword.com. Let us know. And then also the quick links to the valuable information we grabbed from CompTIA and then also from Statista. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we put into a lot of our conversations are, are from third parties. So we want to make sure that uh, you guys have access to some of that as well. And that being said, uh, one of the big things I want to talk about as well is coming up on the 20th, part two of our Cybersecurity Sales Masterclass. We're going to dive into it. Remember, send us your best objections. I want to have those, you guys. Seriously, I want to tear them apart. Like, let's get into the nuts and bolts of this. Like, if we're going to work together as a community, I want to make sure that we tear these questions apart. We want to share with everyone. Uh, we have a great new resource that's coming out, which is uh, a cybersecurity sales LinkedIn community. So we're going to be able to go in there and share. So we're going to take some of these each week. We're going to break a question down. We're going to go through things. I'd love to get input from everybody. Again, email at hack or hello at hackware.com because I want to hear those objections. Like the way we help each other is the way that we go ahead and and, and and share with each other. We can all learn from this. That together we can educate the community about and our customers more effectively if we just share. I've done this for a long time. People have always asked Juan, why do you share how you build your MSP? And I'm like, because that's how we should do it. I feel like we can all raise the tide together as Matt Lee says, one of my great friends. And I'm, I'm of that same opinion. I think the more that we share, the more that we are able to get that information out there. 
I have a, a huge passion in my life and it's called live, learn, give. And I've lived a life, I've learned a lot, and now it's our time to give back. So I can't tell you thank you enough for all of you guys that joined us here today. I want to make sure that for every one of you that's out there that's joined us on this, uh, Jamie, it's great to see you too, buddy. Uh, connect with us. Definitely connect with us on LinkedIn. Jump over to our, our LinkedIn group. Uh, accept the invite for that. We're going to invite all of you to that. So we'd love for you guys to come over and have a conversation with us and join in the community and have some fun. And again, I want to say thank you for all of you. This is number two. For those of you that followed us from number one, I want to say thank you for all of you that, that popped over and, and, and listened in again today. And hopefully we have brought you some value. I look forward to seeing you on the 20th where we're going to be talking about it and tearing down the questions that you send in. So thank you so much for everybody joining us today. We're signing off and saying thank you all. Goodbye, everybody.